very recently a brother sent me this article, a link to this article. thought this was kind of interesting. I had uh, debunked this guy. Um, I'll talk about him here in a minute. But I debunked him years and years ago on the uh, post-trib rapture thieves study. And I'll play that clip coming up here. But uh, USA Today, this is yesterday, February 20th, 2017. Today is the 21st. Um, Right-wing fringe group building multimedia empire near Detroit. I don't know if I'd call it an empire, but you know, talks about uh, Fernell, Michigan here. This this group called Church Militant, a fringe group claiming to be Catholic, but denounced by the church. Good cop, bad cop is what they're doing. Um, it basically you get down through the article there. I, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's pretty long, but uh, you get down through the article and they are pre-Vatican II Catholic. And if you watch any of the guys' videos, they are very much, you know, Catholicism and nothing else. And uh, he wants very much, uh, it says here in the very first paragraph, their religious group hoping the forces that elected President Donald Trump will tear down the wall between church and state. You say, well, that's, you know, just good that they're getting rid of the Johnson Amendment. No, um, because uh, right here, he's talking about Catholic. He wants a Catholic country. He says here, years ago, uh, Voris caused an uproar when he said in one of this in one of his videos, quote, the only way to run a country is by a benevolent, di benevolent dictatorship, a Catholic monarch who protects his people from themselves and bestows on them what they need, not necessarily what they want. Total totalitarian Roman Catholic dictatorship is what he wants. Or the benevolent Catholic monarch gives you what you need protects you from yourself I love that that's what the Catholic Church thinks that they can provide and of course you know he goes into the corruption of the modern Catholic Church and they want the restoration of the true church and whatever and there's a picture of their chapel and things very very radical and of course you know he says some some things about the moral degradation of this country, but then the solution that he comes up with, this Michael um, Voris, I think it is, but I like to call him Michael Virus. Uh, Michael Virus, you know, his solution is that uh, you know the way that you fight the corruption is bring back uh, you know total Roman Catholicism, pre-Vatican II Catholicism, which would burn heretics at the stake. You know, that's exactly what they want, but. Uh, Anyways, you can you can read the article. It's on USA Today. Um, just going down through here. Like I said, on it, there's, you know, you could read the thing here. I'm not going to go through a lot of it, but just who is this guy? Okay, Michael Virus. Um, alma mater is University of Notre Dame, Catholic Pontifical University of Saint Thomas Aquinas. That's right, not too far from the Vatican in Rome. So yeah, he's a uh, Radical Roman Catholic, um, but I'll show you a little interesting video here uh, for all the posties out there. Check this out. One of the most popular notions flying around today in popular culture is this notion of the rapture. And there is probably nothing, and listen very closely to this because this is the truth, there is nothing more anti-biblical than the notion of the rapture. Isn't that funny? That's what a lot of the, like Stephen Anderson, Kent Helvin, Mike Hoggard, Helgard, excuse me. Uh, so what a lot of these guys say, that's anti-scriptural. Now why, why would a Roman Catholic say that the rapture is anti-scriptural? Why? Because they believe that they are co-redeemers, they're co-sufferers with Jesus Christ. It's exactly what the Jesuits teach. Again, I did a whole video debunking Ignatius Loyola's uh, uh, Stupid Spiritual Exercises book. And it's all about, you know, suffering and, and you have to be there and you have to do all this fasting and if you can flagellate yourself and the suffering and the suffering and the suffering. These people idolize pain. They're masochistic. Okay, sadomasochistic is what I should say. They like pain. It turns them on. Put it bluntly. Let's continue with what this guy's saying. This notion of the rapture is false because it, it almost relieves your fears. It, it almost relieves your fears. Yes. 
Continue. It, it says that you're going to get to escape. There'll be no suffering and no trial or tribulation for you Christians, good, good Christians. Uh, there'll be no suffering for you good Christians. Um, yes, there is suffering for good Christians. Usually at the hands of people like this, you know, Roman Catholics and things that hate our guts. Uh, yes, we do suffer in this life. But we're not going to go through God's wrath and judgment in the time of Jacob's trouble. And that's just preposterous. That's preposterous. Jesus Christ died on the cross and was crucified and then beaten and, and you know, all the suffering that he went through. And you believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior and yet somehow you get to escape the suffering and the pain? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he died on the cross. He paid the full price for my sin. And you will suffer as a Christian. Don't get me wrong. Sure, you will suffer. But the point is, my salvation is finished at the cross. His salvation never is. And any other true radical Roman Catholic, their suffering is never over. They have to continue to suffer. Even after they die, they have to suffer in purgatory. The catechism, you know, the Baltimore Catechism calls it God's hospital. You go down and you burn for a while. See? Continue. Jesus said exactly the opposite. This is why this is anti-biblical. It's not unbiblical. It's anti-biblical. Okay. This whole notion of the rapture of getting pulled out, uh, caught up in the earth, you know, snatched away, is also extremely dangerous because it is tied to a larger body of theology which is decidedly anti-Catholic. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. And again, I've done a video on this. The, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away, what people falsely call the pre-trib rapture, just to say it again, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away absolutely obliterates Roman Catholic teaching, Roman Catholic doctrine. Okay? Um, when you're called up, you go right to be with the Lord. There's no purgatory. See? There's no need to suffer on the earth. No replacement theology. Because, see, the church has been called up. And, see, the Pope teaches, they teach that the church is constant. The church is eternal. So there must always be a visible representative of Christ on the earth in the form of the Pope and his holy church. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what do you do with the rapture? If Roman Catholics are truly saved, the rapture happens, the Pope is gone, all the cardinals are gone, the priests, the bishops, the nuns, the monks, everybody's all left. They're just gone. St. Peter's Basilica is just empty. See? That doesn't work with Catholic theology. So you have to have the church being left behind. Staying on the earth. They don't go up. Of course, they will be left behind, but it's not because they're saved. It's because they're lost. Let's continue. The problem with the uh, supporters of the theology of the rapture is that they only recognize Jesus' teaching in the Word. That's a big problem, you know. You should recognize it in some wicked sinner, you know, telling you that this is what Jesus teaches now. Saying it's what he's saying. Divine tradition overthrowing Scripture. In the Scriptures, and I have to say, in an extraordinarily tortured reading of the Scriptures, Watch this. Watch the little subtle attack on dispensationalism. Watch. This is a pre-Vatican II Catholic, okay? You have to go out of your way and make things up and twist things to such a degree and ignore, just totally ignore, other sections of Scripture to come up with the notion of the rapture. Do you see how I did it? You have to ignore other sections of Scripture. No, we don't ignore other sections of Scripture. We rightly divide them. We say, okay, that's written to Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. That's written to a Jew in the Old Testament. That's written to somebody in the Millennial Kingdom. This is written to somebody before the giving of the law, Garden of Eden, whatever. You see? Rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, no Catholic is going around sacrificing animals in a Jewish temple called a synagogue. They're not doing that. Right? So they're just liars. But it's ironic that Kent Helvin, Michael Helgard, Stephen Andersnake, they're all non-dispensational. Proudly 
non-dispensational. You all agree with this guy here. You have to ignore per portions of scripture. They speak the same way. Why? Because they're from the same system. Okay. There you go. Catholic Television.org. Probably not even around anymore. This was 2006. Uploaded in 2006. There you have a Franciscan friar. Uh, if he doesn't repent of his sins, like I said in my study, he will be a friar in hell. But uh, I just thought it was interesting here. Notice, because it is notice the uh, subtle little Catholic uh, propaganda here. Here you have the sword. What is that? This is the temporal. We have the sword. We can go out and cut heads off. Wage war against heretics. So you have the temporal. What do you have here? You have the Bible. The spiritual. This is true Roman Catholicism right here. The spiritual. They control the spiritual. The churches. And they also control the temporal. Over here. The militaries of the world. And these people are setting things up. When the Antichrist shows up, he will be a radical pre-Vatican II Catholic, essentially. And he will reform the church and the white hordes. Uh, the Bible says, God shall enlarge Japheth. So when you have armies that go out and conquer, you look all throughout history, the greatest armies have always been white armies. Why? Because that's the proof of history. And you might have some other little armies here and there that will rise up, but it doesn't take long and the white armies are back whipping them. That's what God said would happen. The descendants of Japheth, the Europeans there, the Isles of the Gentiles, that area over there is going to be the ones, they're the ones that are going to conquer. That's what's coming again. But I just found this interesting. Uh, let me just look this up real quick. I saw one of you pointed this out in uh, one of your videos. Um, right here you have his most recent video, I think one of the most recent ones here, I guess, 22 hours ago, they said that he is now calling himself a uh, Bible-believing Christian. He always called himself a Baptist. You know, I mean, if you down through here, I don't know if there's any uh, independent fundamental Baptist preaching, independent fundamental Baptist preaching, you know, Baptist preaching, Baptist preaching. See, he's trying to get tags, you know, made up so that he can be, you know, link us to his satanic movement. So he gets gets people thinking, oh, Bible believing Christian. Oh, and that's Stephen Anderson. He's a Bible believing Christian. He's not a Bible believing Christian. He's a Bible rejecter, and he talks exactly like this guy right here. Again, radical Roman Catholics. Uh, there's a video. Um, See if I can find it real quick. Be right back. Okay, I found it. This uh, woman here, you know, I saw this video one time and I was like, okay. <laughs> watch what she does here. Let's watch a little bit of this. Listen to what she says. Show no mercy, blah, blah, blah. This is evil. Evil. She's burning the Koran, okay? Excuse me. Evil, evil garbage. And it will be a cold day in hell before I bow down to this crap. I would encourage all of you out there watching who share my feelings to do something similar because we have to make a stand right here and right now. We can't wait around 20 years. We can't wait a generation for our kids to fight this war for us. This war is on us right here and right now. Either we make our stand right here or it's over. Burn a Koran. Put it on YouTube. Show the world that we are not going to back down. Backing down is not what Christianity is about. There's a reason why the church on earth is called the church militant. Okay? You can come after me if you want, boys. You come after me. That's fine. I okay. There's a reason that the church on earth is called the church militant. She's a Catholic. I looked up another video of hers. Yeah. Looked up her website and think she's a Catholic. Radical Roman Catholic. They're looking for war. They're looking to fight. And that's what's going to come in the future. The Antichrist comes. He brings war. These people are getting ready for it.
All right. She, this guy right here, you know, given an AR-15 in the, this BBC documentary about hate preachers. And he says it's the gift that keeps on giving. Catholics. That's what it's all about. 